there and welcome to UNET Plus weekly show, You Talking to Me. Today we are going to focus on how to tackle European extremists, especially those who want to fight abroad. And for this issue, I've got the pleasure to welcome Mrs. Cecilia Malmström, the European Commissioner for Home Affairs. Hello. Hello, good morning. So before we start, just a quick question. So are you going to stay Commissioner or do you want to stay Commissioner after the EU elections? Ah, oh, it's too early to make any decision about that. We have work to do every day until the end of this mandate, so, so we'll see. Okay, so um, in the coming years, so the European Commission is expecting to, to set up a 20 million euros program to tackle yes. extremism, especially for those young people who are going to, to leave the EU to fight abroad in conflict zones. And last week, the EC presented a report with some advices and best practices to all the EU member states mm -hmm. to prevent such acts. So what are you really underlining in one sentence? What is the main concern of this report? And what are you underlining? The main concern is that we see extremism growing in the EU. Foreign fighters, like you said, but also right-wing extremism, left-wing extremism, and other type of extremism that leads to violent terrorist acts. And we need to work together in Europe to prevent that. And that's why we are publishing this uh, this communication with a few advices. So you are talking about more than 1,000 European fighters, actually 1,200, and you were even saying that there, there should be even more. So uh, what, what, where do these figures come from? Well, these are young people who live in the European Union and who go to Syria, but also to Somalia, Sudan, to fight. And many of them come back radicalized, and then they are sometimes inclined to commit terrorist attacks at home here in Europe. And the figures are probably underestimated. These are figures we get from the um, intelligence services in the member states. 1,200, but probably it's more. But did the EC uh, control these figures? Well, no, not at the European Union level, of course not. These are figures that are given by intelligence services in the member states. So by secret services. And how can we be sure that all these figures are not making up, I mean, by all the secret services from all the EU countries, just to, to create a a kind of fear among the population. Well, why would they do that? We have uh, evidence that some people have tried to, to commit uh, terrorist attacks, and these are, are people who are uh, known by the Secret Service and who we are very concerned about. And do you think it's not, uh, I mean, the Secret Service, they don't, have, they don't want to have more control and to gain more control uh, by giving this, those figures? No, I don't think so. And we also see that European citizens going to Syria and, and Sudan and Somalia have died uh, in this. We have reports from family members alarming us on this, their parents, mothers, fathers who say, oh, my son has gone to do jihad in, uh, in Syria, for instance. So we think that these figures are, are low. Uh, but sufficiently alarming to take them seriously. So it's quite, I mean, it's quite scary. So do you think there, there is a, yeah, a danger to, to have bomb attacks in the EU? Yes. Yes? Yes. Okay, and so, so, so yeah, it's really a, a danger. The, so they can, they, these can be dangerous, and intelligence services have already dismantled a few of these networks where people come back radicalized and have tried to, to commit uh, terrorist attacks on European soil, and that's why we need to act together. So how can we be sure, so even through, uh, through online propaganda, how can we be sure, how can we really control those uh, people? We can't. We can't control them. Uh, but we can cooperate to try to prevent it. And that's why this cooperation is important. But I want to underline that it's not only about these people, it's also about right-wing extremists like Anders Breivik in Norway or like, like uh, the, the Golden Dawn in in. Uh, in, in Greece, or, or Jobbik, in, who, who harasses and even kills sometimes Roma actually, people. So it's, it's all kind of extremism. Mm, and it's not on that that we should more focus. If, instead of focusing on uh, European extremists who are going abroad to fight, we don't have to focus maybe on more on our right-wing extremists inside the EU. Absolutely. And that's what the, the communication is very clear about. That is not only about these jihadists who are a small but important number. It's about all kinds of extremism, violent extremism, left-wing or right-wing. And we have seen horrible examples in Europe. People got killed by, by uh, especially right-wing extremism, but also there is a growing left-wing extremism. And that's why we, since two years ago, have a network called Radicalization Awareness Network, where we connect 
people on the local level who work to prevent this. Could be teachers, civil, uh, uh, the civil society, religious leaders, police, researchers, victims themselves, to connect their knowledge and try to identify young people who feel disconnected from society and you enter these kind of movements, sort of sectoristic movements. And so we give advice on how we can cooperate and how we can prevent that. So we should start from the beginning, uh, from the, the education in schools, Absolutely. university. Yeah. So how can we do that? So just giving... Some well, we need to, to include these issues in the education. We need to have a training about the European values. We need to make sure that uh, we can engage maybe with victims who can tell their stories or people who have uh, gone away, who have been in these sectoristic violence movements, but who have come out and who can tell their stories to sort of be a, 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 good, a good example of not what to do to, to young students. That mm -hmm. is very important. We need to connect the researchers. We need to know more about, you mentioned online propaganda. Of course, it's there, uh, but we can do other counter narratives. We can put other stories on the internet as well. And we are working with this with a lot of, of uh, people all over Europe. And the media has also a role to, to play? And the media has, of course, a role to play to, to report on this and to, to, uh, to try to explain the reasons why people are going and uh, to highlight this, yes. Because the co-chair of this, of this, of this programme, the co-chair, Mr. he's called Peter Knopp, he told uh, that uh, emotionally, I mean, the young people are more attracted to emotionally news and maybe more attracted by what they listen on the news. And so they emotionally they say, maybe I want to fight and I want mm -hmm. to do something abroad. That could be the case, and that's why we also need to have other alternative stories. Uh, I have met people who have gone, for instance, in, in extremist um, sects, uh, right-wing or, or Islamist uh, movements, and they have come out, they have exited from that, and they tell their story, say, I was wrong, this is not how you should, should spend your life. And that's why it's so important, we recommend in our communication, that people, all member countries, set up exit programs. There are good examples of how you can, can take individuals and help them to get back into their ordinary life. And that's a very complicated process. So we need to set up those uh, programs all over Europe. Mm. So what's uh, going to be next, so? So in 2015, this is going to be set up? Well, we then? encourage all member states to do that, to have national strategies on extremism, to set up um, uh, exit programmes. And we are also next year setting up a knowledge hub where we gather all the knowledge that we have in Europe. That could be a centre for, for research, that could be a centre for sharing good practices. People could, uh, could contact that centre in order to have uh, uh, people coming to lecture for them or to share the good methods and so on. And that hopefully will be set up next year. Thank you, Mrs. Malmström, to come in our studio. And thank you uh, to all of you to follow us on Uranet Plus and see you next week. Mm -hmm.